Our next speaker tonight is someone we all know very well, Margaret McMillan, Canadian historian, professor at the University of Oxford, where she is the warden of St. Anthony's College. She's a former provo of Trinity College, professor of history at the University of Toronto, and previously at Ryerson University, a leading expert on history and international relations. She's a commentator in the media. We see her regularly. And you probably remember in 2002, 2003, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing about her incredible book, perhaps uh, her most successful. It had two different titles, Peacemakers, the Paris Peace Conference of 1919, and its attempt to end the world. Also published simply as Paris 1919, six months that changed the world. This book was discussed everywhere, and it really popularized that period of time. A fantastic work, which also won the Governor General's Literary Award that year. So please help me welcome tonight, for a few remarks, Margaret McMillan. Mesdames, Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here to join in this very important commemoration, both because it is an important moment in Canada's history, but I think more generally it's important that we remember the great events that have shaped the world in which we live. Important for us all, wherever we live, to remember our histories and to have a sense of the past. And I'd also like to congratulate the Friends of the Canadian War Museum for the fantastic job they've done in organizing it tonight, having it in this wonderful space. And I was very lucky I was able to go around uh, with the director and see the special Vimy exhibition. And if you haven't seen it yet, it really is wonderful and, and very challenging because it's designed to make you think about what's happening today as well, about how we remember the past and how we commemorate those who have died. I care deeply about the history of this country because I think history is important. And I think Canada is, of course, my country. I also think it's a very special sort of place. Our identity in Canada is made of many different strands which are woven together over time. The land, of course, this large, beautiful, rich, complicated land. The many peoples who have made up the Canadian tapestry from the First Nations to the most recent refugees who have come here from Syria. We have many stories in our Canadian past. Not all of them are good ones. We must remember our dark moments as well. But I think, having said that, I think we have a lot to be proud of. We have built a peaceful country, largely through peaceful means. We have evolved as a nation and a state over many years, not without difficulties. It's not always been an easy process, but we have evolved, and we've managed to settle our differences peacefully. And I think that is very important. We have moved from being a set of colonies to being a fully independent nation. We sometimes argue about what the stories in our past mean. And I think that's nothing to be ashamed of. I think we ought to discuss what our past means. We ought to be prepared to look at it in different ways. I've been following, I've just come back to Canada from the UK, and I've been the discussion in the media about the recent series the CBC has been showing on the history of Canada. And it strikes me that one of the defining characteristics of Canadians is we love to argue about our own past, and we seem to be doing that quite a lot over this particular series. I haven't seen any of it yet myself. But although we are, I think, largely a peaceful nation, war is also a part of our story. And we, not, we must acknowledge that, and that, of course, is what we're remembering here tonight. We're remembering a particular episode which is of great importance to Canada in a war that was, by and large, a catastrophe for European and Western civilization. As you probably know, those who went into the war in 1914, the generals, the politicians, I think also many members of the public thought that the war would be a short one, thought that there would be a series of battles, some sort of decisive victory, and then everyone would sit down and talk about peace and the world would go on as it always had. And of course, that didn't happen. A war that most people expected would be over in months lasted until the autumn of 1918. And Indeed, I think many people in 1918 thought it could well last 
into 1919, perhaps on even into 1920. Because what you got with the First World War was advanced industrial societies turning on themselves and using their very advantages, using their very great progress in science and technology, their extraordinary organizing capacities, using that to fight each other. They were highly efficient at mobilizing their resources. They were highly efficient at putting soldiers into the field, moving them about, supplying them, keeping them in the fields. They were most of them highly efficient at mobilizing their factories and their science and their technology and their publics to support the war effort. And what that meant, of course, is that they're also highly efficient at killing each other. And one of the great tragedies of the First World War is that the very successes of advanced industrial nations were able to help to destroy those nations. And of course, as you know, one of the great unfortunate ironies of the First World War was that the power of the defense was just temporarily, not to last, stronger than the power of the offense. And so it's much easier once you dug in to defend a position than it was to attack. And to attack a well-defended position was something that time and time again, the generals on both sides tried in the First World War, time and time again, they failed until the very end of the war. Which was why I think, again, this makes Vimy important. Because in what was a dark year, Vimy showed that it was possible to attack and was possible to seize territory from the enemy. 1917 was a dark year in what was a very dark war. The war was a stalemate. It was drawing in more and more countries. Young men were coming and had been coming from around the world to fight in the war, including, of course, a great many Canadians, Australians, New Zealanders, Indians, Africans. And some of you will have been to the Menin Gate at Ypres. And one of the things that will strike you and has struck you, I'm sure, if you sit there and you look at the names on that gate, is where they come from. They literally come from around the world. And those cemeteries that dot Belgium and the north of France are of soldiers who fell there, often thousands of miles away from their homes. There are Chinese workers there who came to help dig the trenches. There are Vietnamese and African soldiers, and of course, there are the Canadian soldiers. And those Canadian soldiers came from all over Canada, their names reflect the nature of Canadian society. There are Scottish names like my own name, but there are also French names, there are also Ukrainian names, there are Japanese names. There are names of all the peoples who have made up Canadian society. The war in 1917 badly needed some sort of hope that it might end, and I think Vimy helped to provide that. It was a war that had dragged on and looked, as I say, was going to drag on. It was quite possible, so the Allies feared that they might lose. 1917 brought the Russian Revolution, and by the end of that year, the Russians had sued for peace with Germany, which made it possible for the German High Command to begin to think of moving troops over to the Western Front. The German High Command had also started unrestricted submarine warfare game, which threatened to cut off those lifelines which kept supplies, much needed supplies from across the Atlantic, from the Americas, but from around the world, coming to keep the war effort going. And all of the United States was going to enter the war three days, three days before the battle for Vimy. It was not going to be able to send troops, even to get troops into uniform was going to take them time. It was not going to be able to make a real difference for another year. And so as people, the publics, the planners, the politicians looked, at the, at the war in 1917. From the Allied side, the prospect was bleak. And that is why, again, I think we have to put Vimy into its context. It was important for Canada, and Canadians at the time were rightly very proud of it, but it also, I think, was important for the Allied side. It showed that with new tactics, with proper preparations, and the preparations for Vimy were painstaking, with learning from past battles, with understanding the topography, using new methods in artillery, with using aircraft to see what was going on, on the ground, with giving the troops a certain amount of initiative, with giving them a great deal of training, that it was possible to begin to break that dreadful and costly stalemate that had affected so much of the Western Front. And so, yes, I think as Canadians, we should be very proud of living. It was an important moment in the war. It didn't end the war. The war was going to go on for well over another year. But it was an indication that people were beginning to find ways of breaking 
that hideous deadlock which had so consumed and continued to consume lives. And it was something that Canadians then and since have been proud of it. I think as we commemorate it, we should remember also not just the Canadians who died there, but all those who died there. It's a hundred years since the First World War, and I think we need to remember all those who died in wars. Many of today's Canadians had ancestors who fought on the other side, and I think we need to move beyond seeing sides in that war. I think the First World War was a catastrophe for European and for Western society, and I think we need to remember that. And so perhaps as we think about Vimy, we can think in a number of ways. We can think with pride of what it meant for Canada, what it meant for being Canadian, what it showed that Canadians can do. We can think of it as, a, as an important stepping stone on our path to full independence. There were many such stepping stones, but Vimy is clearly part of it. But I think we should also pause to mourn all those who die in wars, wars which they did not want necessarily, wars which they did not do anything to bring about, but wars which were going to consume their lives and leave terrible loss behind for those who survived them. Thank you very much.